Anda kembali lagi dalam Tech Conference 2021 dengan tema Future 5G, Global Connectivity, Cloud Computing, and Internet of Things. Dan saat ini sudah bersama dengan kami sekali lagi yakni ya Pandu Sastrowardoyo, CEO dari Debayo Networks. Di mana selanjutnya kita akan masuk ke dalam sesi Q&A. Okay, Miss Pandu, very interesting and of course uh, very uh, great presentations you have there earlier. Thank you. Um, I think it would be interesting for a lot of users, and I did mm -hmm. bring a lot of technology into the mix. Uh, the concept is actually simple, and it's it's actually very valuable for a lot of people. Yeah, the concept is simple, but the potential is really, really big. Potential is yeah. huge. Potential okay. is really big. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the first question. Uh, we know with uh, you know all the digitalization currently taking place right now, in your point of view, what sorts of um, opportunity are there specifically in the medical technology world, and of course about data security that you mentioned earlier yes uh, so uh, the crossing between medical data uh, and basically data security is actually the crux of this and the way a lot of companies should actually focus on uh, the med tech world it actually requires uh, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, data sets and especially we've, we've seen it now a lot of people are actually aware because of the pandemic because of covid a lot of people are aware that data is uh, actually the crux of a lot of things and of course, our government, a lot of governments in the world are trying to actually uh, utilize this data to make us safe. Now, mm -hmm. um, that is not just for the pandemic, but that is also for influenza, that is also for uh, the medical supply chain, that is also for pharmacogenetics, pharma, uh, pharmacy supply chain, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when we're looking at data, we're, we have to look at data privacy as well and control over data. That's, that, that's always been the discussion. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, patient control the data or the hospitals control the data? Mm -hmm. To be frank, it should be the patients that are controlling their own data because their mm -hmm. own privacy yeah. is there. Mm -hmm. But because of centralized systems in the past, that data necessarily lives within physical servers that are in the hospitals. Yes. So mm -hmm. institutions, institutionalized data, and data privacy is not 100% match, which is why decentralization, which actually brings the data out of these institutions and actually creates ways for the data to still be sovereign mm -hmm. and still be hosted in many servers, that is the crux of uh, the coming uh, sort of the biomedical revolution. And I'm not kidding about the revolution part. The bio really is trying to do that, trying to execute these things with all of the technologies that are available to us. Mm -hmm. So looking at data privacy is not just, you know, it's not something that is just for a niche group of people. Mm -hmm. Data privacy, and especially biomedical data privacy, is something that you, everyone that's listening, need to understand and need to basically take care of. Because mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of revolutions in the past six, seven years. Mm -hmm. CRISPR came, um, which is, basically a way to in vivo edit the genes of a person or an animal. Mm -hmm. CRISPR is basically a tool that can uh, utilize the data, your data, to basically fix you. And this has been done for a lot of things. Thalassemia, there's a lot of genetic illnesses that are actually checking and actually uh, using uh, CRISPR to cure uh, people with diseases. But it is also used to create designer babies, mm -hmm. which has been done in a country that is, well, I'm not going to mention. Mm -hmm. But th that means that because the data privacy laws and data privacy technologies are in a lot of cases not there yet, that control of the data can create a thing that is more um, existential to the human race. Mm -hmm. um, so it becomes very important for us to realize that. Now, the second part of data privacy is, of course, tracking. You are tracked currently by cookies in your browser. You're going to a website, you move over mm -hmm. to another website, cookies mm -hmm. connect you. Mm -hmm. But what about your DNA? What about where you go based on your DNA? What about the medical services that you get based on your DNA or by your medical data? Is that private? We don't probably really know. Probably mm -hmm. not. Probably not. You, yeah. you request services, it's already there. You request tests, mm -hmm. it's already there. The data is given to you as a printout. But what about the data that is in the printer? 
or in the computer that's connected to the printer or in the network that's connected to the printer. Is that safe? Mm -hmm. So this is actually uh, escalating further and further, especially during times of pandemic. And times of pandemic is actually highlighting something that is very, very strong. Privacy is very important. We are forced right now to go to a lot of places with vaccine passports, with applications. But we need to take care of the privacy of that data. And we need to take care, ensure that the data doesn't leak. So um, going back to your question, mm -hmm. biomedical data needs to be focused on data privacy. Okay. And that is the underlying crux. And data privacy is still a major issue currently, Correct. isn't it? It's, it's a huge issue. When, okay. Um, and not just in the biomedical field. You've, you've seen a lot of the um, privacy violations that a lot of these companies, I'm not going to mention, have done, and uh, accidental or not, okay. whether it's a data leak or not. Imagine that, but escalated to not just big tech, but also the bio, big bio side of things. Okay, but what can really, uh, for our viewers to know, what sort of, of uh, maybe uh, misleading information can be used against us using our uh, uh, data regarding our health and, of course, our biomedical data. I'm more concerned not about the misleading information, but the, the, the fullness of information. If someone can collect uh, full data on you, uh, a profile, mm -hmm. your genetic profile, so to speak, there's a lot of things that that person can determine about your future. Mm -hmm. Your risk of having heart disease, your risk of having diabetes, um, your uh, issues with mental health, for example that can be not exactly predetermined, but you know exactly, like if you have this gene, you have a propensity for it. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, when you look at our site and go to like the documents that we put there as well, there are several articles there from NPR, from Time, from other uh, sources as well, that are saying that, hey, um, companies are already starting to hire, or at least starting to research hiring based on your genetic profile. Insurance companies are already researching ways about, oh, your premium can be higher if you have a risk of heart disease that is detected within your genetic profile. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And these things are still in research, of course, but what if it actually becomes real? Here's the thing. When you fill in your insurance form, you sometimes get this question. How, do you have a history of heart disease in your family? Right? Do you realize that that is a genetic question? Because if it's in your family, you mm -hmm. might have a propensity for it. That's a genetic question. So within that scope, would, if I do a personal genetic test in one of the companies, one of the hospitals that collaborate with my insurance mm -hmm. company, would the insurance company be able to see? Mm -hmm. Would they be able to, oh, Pandu has a higher chance of heart disease, higher premium. So that's, that's privacy number one and mm -hmm. privacy number two is something that is actually coming really soon biometrics based on dna uh, a lot of people are actually uh, talking about uh, forensics using dna that is not consented we're not giving mm -hmm. consent to our dna being used yet it's used it's happened before in the us um, a couple of years ago um, a criminal actually got captured because his cousin went to 23andMe or some other personal genetic testing company and provided her DNA. Now that cousin doesn't know, his, uh, doesn't know the other cousin, doesn't know the criminal, right? But because the cousin gave the genes, it has similar biomarkers, family biomarkers, that uh, connect a scene of the crime with that person. Mm -hmm. That sounds good, catching criminals, always good, right? But the question is, did the cousin consent? The cousin never consented. And of course, the criminal never consented. Okay, so our data is already being used against us. I would say it that exactly. way. Exactly, exactly. Okay. The, 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 the thing about it is, in, in the US, of course, a lot of people already have like personal genetic testing. Like, uh, uh, I did like a mini survey on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, five out of 10 of my friends in the US already did some form of personal genetic testing, whether in hospital or like 23andMe or Ancestry.org, right? Mm -hmm. In Indonesia, that's not being done yet. In Asia, some uh, countries are doing it, but not much. So the reason we're not seeing much of it is because we're not in a place where the data already exists. Mm -hmm. So um, 
moving back to DBIO and moving back to the technologies we're talking about, we are, uh, we are actually very good at leapfrogging. Like we are in a very good position of leapfrogging all of these other uh, companies because we are not just one lab. We can enable local labs, Indonesian labs, to come into our platform mm -hmm. and use our platform to sell their own personal genetic testing services, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. But do it anonymously. Oh. Ensure that the user's data remains the user's data. So that would bring about sort of a revolution in that way. Um, and of course, we're also targeting the US market. But that's another story. But for locally, for Indonesia, we are open for collaborating with any lab who wants a digital storefront for their, for their entire services. Okay, and it's still unheard of in our country. Uh, Ms. Pandu, um, very nice conversation. We'll continue right after the break. Yes. Dan kami akan kembali usai jeda berikut. Tapi sebelumnya saya kembali mengingatkan kepada anda para pemirsa untuk mengirimkan pertanyaan ke nomor WhatsApp 0812-1299-0001. Karena 8 orang penanya yang beruntung akan berkesempatan untuk mendapatkan 5 Huawei Ban dan juga e-voucher senilai total 3 juta rupiah. Dan Tech Conference 2021 mengusung tema Future 5G, Global Connectivity, Cloud Computing, and Internet of Things akan kembali usai jeda berikut ini. Tetaplah bersama dengan kami.